It's time! The ATM, the Apologise to Me podcast. It's episode 10. My name is Martin Devlin. I work for the platform out of New Zealand. We do a sports show, iOS, it's only sport. And with me, the always Mark Watson. And at the end of this part, as we close the page, as we move to another chapter of New Zealand rugby after nine tests so far this year, Mr. Watson, we are going to put the All Blacks through a performance review. No, it's not the rugby union doing this. It's a couple of fans sitting there <laughs> and deciding where we Matt, sit. Looking forward to it, Marty. Looking forward to it. Let's fire it up, mate. Apologise to me! Nine tests in then. Rugby championship in the cupboard. Bledisloe Cup in the cupboard. A team that has turned around and won its last three matches after defeat to Ireland at home, losing a series to Ireland at home, after defeat in South Africa, after losing to Argentina at home, history-making defeats. The ship has been rewrited, oh, Watto, oh, Watto, and oh, you've oh, got to apologise oh, to our man, Foss. Th- th- there's been a lot of editorials over the years regarding the All Blacks, and that was one of the better ones, but I'm not sure in the history of the All Blacks of heard the word in an editorial lost so many times. True. How many times has the word lost been used this year for an All Black team? Oh boy, it's tough. You know, I know you're going to ask me probably which is the hardest defeat to take. I mean, I think the two against Ireland probably have the most significance in regards to legacy because we've only just got back to playing uh, sides in three tests here. And let's be honest, up until recently, they'd never beaten us at home. The loss to Argentina hurt as well. Um, because they'd only ever beaten us once before. So I'd, I'd probably say the Argentinian performance was the worst performance, but the one that hurts the most, and they can forever rub in our face, yeah, you've got to say the See, two I, losses to the Irish. I, I would say the one in Nelspit was the one that got me the most, because after we'd lost to Ireland in Dunedin, then we lost in Wellington, all the Ferrari around Foster going to South Africa, having to win one of those two tests, and it was so depressing watching that game where we were just physically beaten up. I mean, I, 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 I said afterwards that I thought, in the words of the young people, they bitch slapped us is what they did. And we had nothing. We had no answers to them whatsoever. Remember Malcolm Marks just over every single ruck he got the ball. Physically, we were, we were just second rate. We were directionless, rudderless. And I thought at that stage, my God. We're not going to get out of this. I really didn't think. I, I was at my the, the lowest level of despair I've been all season after that Nelspruit defeat. So you can isolate and identify every one of those losses, and none of them are acceptable to the All Blacks or to All Blacks fans. Because what we're sitting here looking at, Mark, is we're looking at a five and four season. And at the end of it, I'm going to ask you to give us a an, an, an A to an E, like we're doing some kind of an exam or some kind of assignment or something like that. So, you, so have a good think about that. Okay, my worst defeat was a Nels, but yours were the Ireland ones. Have we improved that much since then? Okay, but yeah, just the, I think the disappointing thing about the Irish one was that we lost to France and we'd lost to Ireland at the end of the year, and we had enough time to think about that, to turn it around, to look at what we needed to do, and we simply didn't. Um, have we learned to loss? That? Well, see, this is the funny thing. For the first time in history, and it hurts to say this, the Southern Hemisphere teams are no longer the benchmark. The Northern no, Hemisphere, for the first time in history, are actually ahead of where Southern Hemisphere rugby is. So they're the benchmark. Have we improved? Sorry, I just threw a pen at you, Martin. Uh, have we improved? Wasn't the first time. Look, I'm going to say this again. The only real test for this All Black team to see whether we've improved is they've got to go and beat Wales, they've got to go and beat Scotland, and they've got to go and beat England on the end of the year to a three tests in three weeks. I mean, that Wallabies team was woeful. It reminded me a little bit... Look, I I shouldn't take anything away from the performance. The performance was magnificent. All of the players were great. You can only play the players in front of you. But let's not kid ourselves on where Australian rugby is at, where it has been. Now, it reminded me a little bit of the forward battle. You know, you've talked previously with the Warriors. It's all very well to go into the gym and push the big weights, but the weights don't push back. Well, that Australian forward pack didn't really push back. Their back line didn't get up flat in our face. We've still got to prove that we can play against rushing defences and a physical forward pack. Does Akira Awani played really well on the weekend? Does he really have it when he is bullied? That is the big question for me. And I still think there are a lot of unanswered questions. Um, so have we improved? Well, a week earlier, we basically lost a test to the Wallabies, didn't we? So at the moment, no. 
40 to 10 it was at Eden Park. And you've got to say about that scoreline, that it was a fantastic scoreline. You know, I, I, I thought it would be a much closer game than that. Me too. But it was, it was disappointing in a way because... They just didn't come to play at all. They'd fired all their shots in 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 Melbourne, and and look, they had they had a good chance of taking one off us. They were never going to beat well, us twice, and so they would kind of consider that they probably, well, even though they didn't on the score, but they probably almost won that first yeah. game. That was look, it was like Argentina. They threw all their chips on one performance, and Argentina got away with it in Christchurch. The Wallabies didn't in Melbourne. At the end of it, though, we have won the rugby championship amongst four teams that no one has looked overly convincing. Everyone has lost. To everyone, apart from we haven't lost to Australia, and of course South Africa beat Argentina twice. But who won the rugby championship in 2019? Wouldn't have a clue, mate. Exactly my point. When I was the last we time did, we had a we? ticker tape? No, Australia. When was the last time we had a ticker tape parade we didn't win for winning the rugby championship? Well, hang on, 219 is a truncated championship. It's a World Cup year, so that doesn't, doesn't matter. Count. My point is, mate, who cares? The only thing I worry about with the All Blacks is you win every test. You start dropping tests, it's a failed season, as far as I'm concerned. Well, if you lose this to, rugby championship, it's not the Six Nations. If you Nations. lose to three different opponents in a year, I always my benchmark has always been if the you benchmark. Lose was the Irish series this year. If you year, lose mate. to two different opponents in any year, the All Blacks are not the best team in the world. That's always been my yep. benchmark. All right, then. Best win of the season for you? Oh, it had to be Saturday night. Well, what I know, it has to be Joburg, doesn't it? Because that was the turnaround game. If we'd lost in Joburg, we'd be sitting here having a completely different conversation. We'd probably be talking about a completely different The most different important coach. win, okay, and I will backtrack and I'll agree with you, was Joburg. I think the most complete performance... Was Argentina in Hamilton? No, it was Australia at Eden Park. Okay. See, I look. I, I left Eden Park on Saturday night, and I, I, I should have felt a hell of a lot happier than what I did, but I, I, I just didn't in the end. I just thought, my God, these these guys just are, are absolute rubbish. Are we that good? Yeah, we oh. put forty points on them. They put yeah. We're not. So uh, you know, but, too but, many but un- see, unanswered but questions. See, but still. see, this is the thing, though, isn't it? Uh, you know, and I've done a bit of talkback radio since then and I've read some columns and boy our media are fickle and suddenly we've turned this around and here's Ian Foster once again yelling out and the best is still to come he was telling that us two years ago the best is still to come it's like I, I, I'm going to declare my hand right now I still don't think Ian Foster is the right guy to coach this all black team I'm still not going to give him the credit for the victory on the weekend I'm still going I'm going to give the vict- victory I'm going to give any improvement in the all blacks full credit goes to Jason Ryan full credit goes to Joe Schmidt why? Because when the All Blacks were losing, who were the scapegoats? Who were sacked? Well, it was Plumtree and Brad Moore. So if we're losing and you blame the two assistant coaches, then surely when we start winning, you've got to blame. Well, you've, you've got, got to give, give credit you've to, got the to the two give assistant credit to coaches. The head coaches. Well, you've got to be no, gracious you enough. Yes, you have you to. Don't. No, I'm sorry. He's still he has charge. damaged me too much. He's Mate, damaged the All Black brand for too long. You know, we're made to believe with this guy that none of us really ever felt that he was good enough to be the All Black coach. We always felt he was going to get the job no matter what. And that it was a bit of a done deal. He was given a lifeline in the rugby through his friendship with Steve Hansen. And he's, his level is that 2IC. Second, that's his level of coaching. And then I'm suddenly made to believe that for the first time in 130 years, we've got a coach no one really believes in. But just coincidentally, we also have the least amount of talent ever available. That's where I've been sold. Rubbish. I, 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 and I will disagree with you on both. I still think that this team has got so much to prove. I go through this team and I and look I look at, at next you, year's got World your Cup. I love fuzzy t-shirt on. We go, we go to next year's World Cup. Um, I want to talk about the the best new players, um, the most improved players. I'm going through that team at the moment, and I'm thinking. So you know, do we have? So we've got an all black team. We're now looking for the most improved. Yeah, we are. Are we most improved? Is this under eight footballers? Oh, no, 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 mate, so we can have most improved a, in the a, all blacks. It's the reality of where we are. You know, after losing. Oh, so, so Ian Foster. Ian Foster again doesn't have the players. He's the victim. No, look, I'm, all I'm saying here very Martin, clearly Martin, is Martin. last year we lost to Ireland and France, right? And we got smacked up by both of those teams. The reality is we're not the best team in the world. We've lost to three different opponents this year and we've lost but four we tests should as be, well. Martin. No, we shouldn't be. We no, should we, be. Boy, we're not by right, mate. There's no way we should be by right. Why the heck these, these countries have got much bigger years, oh, for, for 130 sake. years for, we have been. For 130 years we've been exporting beef and lamb and everything else to England and no one wants it anymore. Grow up, mate. The reality of it is that all of these countries have got much bigger resources, much bigger playing bases than us. And the moment that they actually locked in and decided that they want to be good at rugby, of course they are going to be good at rugby. We're not some kind of divine being here in New Zealand that every single year our players are better than everyone else. Our super rugby's not as good as what their competitions are up in the, in the Northern Hemisphere. Look at what happened on the weekend with the 
Grand Fairly Shield. That's meant to be one of the most prized possessions in New Zealand rugby, and 3,000 people turn up in Wellington to watch. You watch MPC rugby, it's club rugby mostly. There's so many goofy mistakes and stupid decisions made. And who's, Our players who aren't is, as who good as part, we... And who's part of that erosion? I'll tell you who eroded it, and I've said it before. Chu Hansen oh, here and we your go. mate Foster. Well, you get over it, it, mate. That's what you're talking about last century. I'm talking about today. I'm talking about the now, Watto. I want to know the players that have come into the All Blacks. I would say... Uh, oh, you're asking me? I would say, no. look, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the front row has actually been massively improved since the start of the year, okay? Now we've got a young front row. Fletcher Newell and oh, alongside God. Toki Aha and Fletcher alongside Newell. Ethan DeGroote. Okay, those three guys to me are a real front row. You look at our locks. These two are the best in New Zealand, but in a year's time, Sam Wildlock would have played 140-something tests by that stage. Are these two going to win us a World Cup? We've got a loose forward trio that we haven't decided on yet, have we? I still think halfback and first five, you could you could change that combination around and, and no one's going to scream to the heavens and say you've got it completely wrong. There are two guys there that are absolutely cementing their spots. We've still got a midfield that we have questions about. We don't know what our combination is. Do we have the right back three in place? Are they playing in the right positions? These are all the questions I still have after winning both of those trophies. But at least we've won both of those trophies. If, we, if we'd sat here and we'd lost the Bledisloe like Cup and didn't win the Rugby Championship, can you imagine what the reaction is? You've at least got to be happy about that, don't you? Martin, you, again, this is the first time in 130 years oh, here we go. where we've got a team with so Stop many talking positions. About history, that, mate. History no, doesn't no, count. It's here. about legacy, it's Martin. It's about winning today. That's the is problem. What it is. So forget, Are we good enough? You forget. Your, Are we good enough? Forget your legacy and you start to diminish the All Black brand. Now let me start. I mean, let me start. Like, let me start. Show, I mean, if you were English, you'd be telling me that in '66 you won the oh, World Cup and you quite. should still be competitive. That's 50 years ago, mate, and longer. Martin, 130 years is 130 Martin, years. We've got to go and win next year. These players are the guys that we have to win with. There is no one else. Martin. Are I'm, we good enough? I'm, I'm going to punch you in a minute. Taki Ahau, find of the season. Ethan DeGroote, congratulations. Not originally picked, remember, not good enough. Not good enough. Not fit enough, And they then said. they brought him in. Been brilliant. Lomax, I need to see Lomax against the Northern Hemisphere Same. side to be proved. Same with the Fletcher Newell. I, I'm not convinced on Fletcher Newell. I agree with Scrambled you. I thought, I thought it was Brodie Retallick's best performance in a long time yeah, on the was, weekend. He was excellent. But again, they get injured. What have we got below? Not a lot. Okay, we go to the loose forward. Sorry, not convinced on Sam Kane. The best rugby player in the world. And I don't care what team he's in. Forget how the results have been. Is still Artie Severe, wherever you play him. Okay? So if you're asking me at the moment, Toki Ahi, I'm going to go with De Groot and I'm going to go with Artie in the forwards. In the back line, okay? In the back line, the only player, and, and I'm going to give him some credit here because I. I've said he is the best winger in the world, and I'm not sure that centres his position. But the only guy that I think really has stepped up, given 100%, has been Rico Awani. I think everybody outside of that, I still think there's a lot of uncertainty. So four good All Blacks is basically what I've seen throughout this entire season. Guys who I think genuinely live up to what it means to be okay, an All well, Black. I, I there's been a lot of inconsistencies. I'd agree with you with Rico. Can, can, I say, can I say, though, and maybe there is some merit when you grow up and play with your brothers in the backyard in Taranaki. Oh, here we go. Um, he was the I, best I thought, player I thought on the Barrett, field. I thought he Barrett at second 5'8 five five. was brilliant. Now we need to give him an opportunity against the Northern Hemisphere sides. I would still like to see Will Jordan at fullback and Bodie back on the bench. I think anything Barrett did in attack, I think Jordan can do and do. And that also then provides another opportunity for a Sevu Reese or a Lester Fianganuku or, or someone else. So, yeah, out of the 15, I think there's four that I genuinely think um, have been very, very good this year. Well, this year. is actually a much more positive state that you were in after Ireland and also after Nelspert and after Christchurch, weren't you? So, I mean, this is a good thing to see. We Look, we have to be realistic enough. Well, it's the first time in 130 years we've that only be, four players have been recognised as being not, good enough mate, for go all Go back to 98 when we lost five oh, in a row. Go back to 2009 when we lost three times to the Yuppies. We were in the same situation. We were bereft. Go back to 98 to 2003 where we couldn't beat yeah, Australia but, at all. Our players weren't up to it at that stage. The coaches we had at the time had the ability oh, to readjust. Really? No, and you were seeing Ian Foster. John Hart sacked, mate. I remember you calling the talk back and demanding that. After Hart had won in South Africa, then in 98, he's no longer a good coach. No. What happened? No. We lost all of those no. players. We lost Fitzpatrick, no. we lost no. Ola Brown, we lost Zinzan, we lost no. Bunce. That's what happens when you lose world-class players. My, you my, don't replace them. My, my, look at your stupid Liverpool side. You gave away Wijnaldum. You gave away Mane. Now look at you. you got no midfield and no can attack, we, mate. Can we, it happens. Can we get a doctor in here, please? It happens. Martin, Martin. Titan. We do it every week. Just let's just slow it down, tie it in, tie it out. Actually, my first give Foster no, some give, credit, mate. My first foray into Talkback Radio as I actually phoned. So 
we lost the 90, 91 Rugby World Cup. And I remember phoning up Murray Deak. And this is this time when Auckland Rugby were just magnificent. And I phoned up Murray and I said, Murray, Murray this, this is when you know, said, we, had, we, had, we had the whole Laurie Mains discussion and everything exactly. going. I said, I said, Murray, if we had a said the if we had a sent the Auckland rugby team to the Rugby World Cup, we would have won. No, we wouldn't the have the Rugby mate. World Cup. And he's you know he says to me, he goes, Mark, you've got to be the most biased Aucklander I've ever had on a show. And I, I was like, Thank you, Murray. And I've never mate, you, that. you selected Bernie McCarthy at second five and he patted Campisi's bum as he ran past, mate. I'm still asking for him to tackle. 91, I'll get over that though. But now, where are we? So where do we sit now? If you're if doing a, a performance review, I would give the team... Now, see, this is the weirdest thing. I I think the All Blacks, every time I do a performance review, need to be A-plus for me because that's what I demand yeah. of them. This team, I'm going to give a a B-. minus. God, a B-minus? A B-minus. It, it's think a failed season. How do you give someone a B-minus in a failed season? Because we've, we've, lost, we've, we've lost run Argentina the at because home. Because we've retained those trophies. We've improved oh, slightly. Martin, we are Martin. on the improved. You and can't tell me you're not on the improved. We've just won three in a row. And so the whole country jumps on your bandwagon and says, let's give these guys a B-minus. So why do we suddenly a B accept isn't mediocrity? A B-minus isn't great for the All Blacks. That's my it's point. It's better than you ever got academically, Martin. A lot better. <laughs> What it's saying is it's saying that there is plenty of room for improvement and we are nowhere near the standard we need to be. And I agree with you. When it comes to the end of the year, those tests it's against... It's a D, Martin. It's a D. It can't we be lost a D. How can it, it possibly a be a D? It's a D if we were four and five or three and oh, six. We when, won the rugby championship. What? So you taking... To, when, sorry, when is the when is well, the ticket tape parade? When so is the, on, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, the South Africa and Australia. None of those oh, teams are worth no, considering. No, None of those no, teams are going to make a quarter final. State, no. None of those teams are going to make a semi-final at the World Cup, are they? No. Oh, please. You don't think that one team from down here is going to make a semi-final? Yeah, but look... That's the end of our you, discussion. You, That's all I need to know. Martin, Martin. You're in La La Land. You're in Cloud Cuckoo Land, mate. It's Mental Health Week. Go and make the most of it. That's what I'm saying. Martin. You cannot really give this All Black a mark and a score until the three big tests in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, I don't want to hear how long the season's been. I don't want to hear about, oh, it's been a long season. These guys are about to have another two or three weeks off. They were rest and rotated out of Super Rugby. There's been big gaps in between these All Black tests. I don't want to hear, oh, it's the end of the year. We're tired. We've been going for nine months. I don't want to hear the excuses. Just go. Ireland came down here, no excuses. They'd come off the back of a long season. Just on that, can we change it up and talk about Neve Fisher Black winning that women's under 23 world road cycling title? Arguably the greatest achievement by a female cyclist in this country who I'd imagine spends about nine or ten months of the year away, doesn't get paid a lot, doesn't live in a beachfront apartment pay on the own Gold way Coast, to Wollongong to think, and paid her own way to Wollongong no as hard as nails, and you don't hear too many complaints from her. You know, if you took her heart, you put it into the Warriors and you put it into the All Blacks, you'd win everything. Have we talked about the Barretts? That'll do. We're done. That's all I need. You're insane! Devlin. I don't do if, buts and maybes. I do absolutes. The Platform.